It's Grant <laughs> Flanders. It's Logan Mance. It is Matt Hall, and it's the KSO Show, presented to you by People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. We're recording on this fine Tuesday afternoon. Yeah, it is, Tuesday afternoon. From Tallgrass Tap House in Manhattan, Kansas, on points. I believe it's 320 East Points. If it's not, just head to the 300s on points. Look for Tallgrass Tap House. Come see us. Uh, Logan, you're running the board today. How do we sound so far? Do we sound great or sound or fantastic? How do you feel today? Like do do, but okay. uh, <laughs> I mean, hey, there it is. <laughs> Honesty, transparency, that's what we're all about on the KSO show. Flanders, do you feel better than Logan today? Probably. I mean, I'm not in school, so he yeah. has to wake up oh. and go do school stuff. Speaking Man, of I stay s- five hours in class, so it's a lot <laughs> Speaking different. Speaking of school, before we talk some K State sports here, real quick, this is K State sports related, but Logan, you called the game on 91 9 on Saturday from the windy and cold photo Ooh. deck. <laughs> like, how would you grade your performance? How do you think you did? You know, 10, 10, you're the greatest announcer ever. One, you're Boom Goes a Dynamite guy. Like, where do you think you are in this scale off that off that game? A 10. No, I'm joking. There uh, we go. Probably Humble like a six. Six is good. You know, yeah. somewhere to work from. You got something to improve yeah. upon, you know. Um, and I got some tape on you out there yeah. you can work on. How about your partner? He seemed nice. But yeah, he's pretty good. Okay. We can make, what was his name again? Paxton. Paxton. Can make fun, does he listen to the show? Because if he does, we'll make fun of him. Uh, no. I okay, then we won't, we, won't, we won't bother him. But he seemed like a very nice guy, too. Yeah, so. The, the only thing difficult about it is the earphones. You can't hear your partner in the earphones. Yeah. So it's like sometimes we interrupted each other because you just. Or he sets you up for something you don't yeah. know what he said. And you're just like, okay, anyway, and then when second you, and ten. And boom, then when you came on the, the show, I was yeah. really afraid we'd ask you the same yeah. question. You did not. No, I tried to. I could kind of tell, you know, standing between you guys, you guys probably couldn't hear each other. So I yeah. was ready. I was ready to, you know, to, 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 to answer things in a clever way if you guys did that. But, uh, no, you guys, you guys were really, really good. Um, speaking of really, really good, Grant Flanders is going to have some opinion to share. No. Uh, we're going to talk. We're probably like three minutes in already, four minutes in. We're going to talk K State hoops for the first five or ten minutes of this. Again, it is Tuesday as we're recording this. K State plays a game tonight against Arkansas Pine Bluff. We're not going to discuss that game. And so, if some of the things we're talking about seem a little bit funny because you already saw another game and you know more than we do about it, I uh, apologize. You skip ahead five or so minutes, listen to yeah. football, or you can listen to Flando. So, Flando, I want to ask you. This. I don't know uh-huh. as we go to this game tonight if Sean Williams is going to play tonight or not. Yeah. Uh, we know his suspension is ending soon, whether that means tonight or two games from now. I'm not quite sure. Bruce Weber did make clear to us yesterday in the presser that he's taking part of all the practices, mm-hmm. he's taking part of all the scrimmage. He's not not playing with the team. So what could a K-State fan hope for from oh, yeah. Sean Williams, whether it's tonight against Pine Bluff or against Pitt or against Kansas, yeah. you know, way down the stretch. The season, like, what know? can they hope for him if things go well, Sean Williams? If things go well, yeah, and he keeps yeah, his head side. on straight, and yeah, he's, he's on the team the whole year, I think you see a guy that could possibly uh, – Fight for a starting position, and if not, just a really nice piece off the bench. Because this guy, offensively, he he can do a lot of things. He's going to look to score the basketball, which is something K-State needs, especially from behind the arc, someone that can shoot the ball. I think he is uh, someone who you haven't seen a lot of him, but he can shoot the basketball, especially from deep. So I think that is something that's going to help K-State. Defensively, he's also pretty darn good, too. So that's the thing about Sean Williams is, Bringing him back into the the mix, I don't think it'll be instant. I don't think right away you'll see a bunch of him. But uh, as the season goes on by Big 12 play, I think you could see a guy that could contribute huge, especially if he's coming off the bench. I'll chip into this answer. Um, We talked to Cardi one-on-one, and he was talking about how he likes to play without the ball and likes to come off screens and likes to just play off the ball. And I think Sean Neal Williams, if he comes back, and can play a starting role, maybe can take that pressure off Cardi yeah. having the ball. Well said. I mean, there's been talk about using David Sloan to do mm-hmm. that, and that's the possibility too. Just, just what you talked about, getting Cardi off the ball because there's advantage to it. But when David Sloan so far, who I love watching him play offense and push the ball yeah. in transition, there's probably nobody I'd rather have handle the ball on a break yeah. for K-State than David Sloan. But until the defense comes along, it's what it's what Logan talks about. Maybe Sean is the better option if mm-hmm. you want to slide Cardi to the two because he can still play defense like you talked about. And, and Sean and Sean Neal Williams also, he's a guy – I you guys think, both said Sean Neal Williams. I'm I just going to correct Williams. you guys. Gosh. Sean Williams. There's no Neal. The Neal is gone. It's fine. I'm not mad. I'm <laughs> well, not mad at you guys. If you'd actually but I was going to let. But I was going to let Logan do it. But then for you to come in and do the <laughs> same know. thing, now I can't let it happen. <laughs> I know. Anymore. It's, it's Sean Williams. Uh, it's a disgrace. It's a new Sean. New Sean. It's a disgrace Sean to KSO. Williams. It is. Yeah. Um, but start the show. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a guy that I'd like thinking of him coming off the bench because he's a, he's a gunner. He's a guy that wants to get his shots up. So I think. If you if you get a guy like Cardi and X 
and they're on the bench, he could be a guy that you want to spark some offense because you might have a bunch of young guys out there. But obviously they do like to keep X out there when there's a bunch of young guys out there. But I do think Sean could be a key piece in in, in what is already a deep team, just at making it even deeper. I have one not very serious question I'm going to ask first, and then a serious question. If you have to compare Montavious Murphy to a former Michigan State Spartan, are you picking <laughs> Draymond Green or Jaron Jackson Jr.? You've got to pick a side. You've got to go with it. Who is he more similar to? And argue it however you want. There's not a right answer. But what do you got, Flanders? You first. Which Sparty is he more like, JJJ or Draymond Green? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Draymond Green because he's a scrappy. I agree. I, agree. I, 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 agree. I think he's. I think he's a scrappy, very emotional guy on the court. Can play really good defense, and I think that's what Draymond Green gives. And he also could hit a three here and there, which know. Montavious can do here and there. Not at the not level. I don't think Jaren, vertically. Yeah, not like yeah. I just think yeah, Jaron Jackson is just elite level athlete, elite level sh- shot maker too, especially in the NBA. I mean, he's just a different guy. But my, but I can see the comparison with Draymond. Yeah. I think Draymond is a little bulkier, you know, bigger no body. No doubt he is. But with years of uh, Montavious being in this lineup, we saw years of Draymond at Michigan State. By his senior year, maybe he could be the size of Draymond. On, on, on the flip side, I don't know who you're going to say, but if you're going to argue Triple J, I mean, maybe Montavious <laughs> Murphy plays the five for K-State the next few years. Like yeah. Jackson can. Maybe he's a stretch five. Like uh-huh. I mean, so anyway, what's your answer? Which part are you going with here? I'm going Draymond. Yes, um, okay. I don't have to argue for he's gonna, <laughs> Draymond's going to score most of his points in the paint. I think that's what Montavious will do. He'll, Draymond shoots probably about the same percentage as Montavious will probably shoot the three point. But he'll hit the big ones. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Draymond. I love Montavious Murphy. I, I, I just thought the discussion on the board, I liked it. And I could see both of them, again, because body type, you're right. He's not really like Draymond because of the – yeah, there's a great argument. But yeah. it, it's a chance to tie Sparty in case they didn't have won, so why not do that? I love it. My more serious question for you guys before we kind of wrap up hoops. We'll talk more hoops as we get in part of this tournament this weekend. K-State's going to have a chance to play Pitt, of course. And then if they're fortunate enough to beat Pitt, you get either, I think, Bradley or Northwestern. So you're probably going to see two good opponents this week. How much, you know, will what K-State does in this tournament, first Flanders and Logan, maybe impact your impression of the Wildcats early this season? I mean, it'll help a lot. I mean, I think last year when they went down to uh, the Bahamas or wherever it was and they they beat Missouri in the mm-hmm. championship game they down there. Cool, for, like the drum, like yeah. yeah. I think that showed a lot that they that that team could could play in a in a more pressure packed tournament type type environment early on in the season, and that really helped them. Um, but this team's a lot different. Yeah, they're deeper, but they're younger, so you could see a little more miscues as far as that goes down in Fort Myers. But like Coach said, you know, you get down that warm weather. You get some uh, sun, some sun, mm. <laughs> a little vitamin D, <laughs> a little vitamin D in uh-huh. it could help them. Who knows? But I do think it, it's not going to tell me everything because right. non-conference never does. Same. But it, it, it'll be nice to see what they do against some tougher competition. Well, then I'll change it a little bit for you because I think Fundo gave a good answer. Just like what do you what would you like to see them do a little better when they play against you know these good teams? What would you what would be encouraging you, Logan, to see from K State against Pitt and then maybe Bradley Northwestern? I think just being able to score the ball against all types of defenses. Yep. So. I think you'll even see tonight. I know we're not going to talk about the game tonight. No, I think tonight. it's okay to bring this up because they're either mad that the Cape Cape yeah. score against the zone or they're happy they did. Well, so, Pine Bluff will play a lot of zone. Right. And K-State usually struggles against the zone. Just That's been Bruce Weber's MO. So just scoring the ball, getting off to a, a fast start. Everybody's been talking about their first half struggles. And like Flando said, I think going to a different place will be a morale boost where mm-hmm. you can a team can come together in a different – I mean, it, is, it is like 70 degrees and sunny here, too. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty nice day. It, it is nice here in Manhattan. Surprisingly nice It is. It's Manhattan. that weird weather, but you got to love it. I wish it would stick around. Um, I'd love to keep talking hoops, you know, but like I said, you know, the, the, the timing of this makes it tricky for I know us. It does. So maybe let's just trade roles. Let's you do become it. the host. Let's do it. And I will become the analyst. Mm-hmm. And let's talk some Kansas State football. Let's talk some Texas Tech Red Raiders That's against true. the Kansas State Wildcats coming up on Saturday. Uh, Logan wants to know if you want to do two segments. What do you think? No. Let's okay. just keep it rolling. I mean, let's, yeah. that's what I say. Yeah, just I think keep so it rolling. Too. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you, yeah, it, you, you already skipped ahead if you skipped ahead. So here uh, we are right. Right. right now. Um, but I do like the thought. We do like to do two segments sometimes. But you know what? Let's just keep it rolling. It's nice to and, have these behind and, the co- fourth wall conversations exactly. on the air. Too, yeah. You know? and, and now like, all of a sudden I'm hosting like it's magic. <laughs> right. <laughs> just improvising all the time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 
ba, ba, ba. <laughs> that was like the Sunday show music. Did you hear it? I nailed it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, oh. Anyway. anyway. <laughs> Jet Duffy and the Texas yeah. Tech Raiders. Yeah. I mean, first, just tell me what you see from them, I, and then we can get into K-State I, a little I mean, I pulled up the old Jet Duffy file today, earlier yeah. today, because I'm kind of a Jet Duffy guy, too. You know, the Jet Sweep's funny thing to me. <laughs> and, I mean, I tell you what, I think his number is 14, 14 touchdowns against three picks this year, mm-hmm. so he's not turning it over like he did last year. Completion percentage in the upper 60s. The only number that doesn't look better than Bowman's is yards per game. Yeah. You know, but we talk about Alan Bowman, who I'm a fan of him, too. You could argue that Jet Duffy's been as good or better than him this year. Mm-hmm. Put up big numbers the last few weeks. Sums and wins. Sums. I said sums. I'm going to keep it up. <laughs> Some in losses. He was really bad against K-State Manhattan last year. But that was that cold weather. Down there in Lubbock, it might not be so cold. He's going to be at home. I think he's going to be a big challenge for K-State, him and this entire offense, because it's so different. We talk all the time, or at least I will no. all the time, about you know K-State not being able to prepare and practice You know, playing good versus good against an offense that's a similar style. That will never be a bigger, never be a bigger problem than it is this week. Um, Chris Kleiman kind of even hinted mm-hmm. at that today that they basically can't replicate that in practice. So um, I'm not trying to make Texas Tech out to be world beaters. They have, a, you know, they haven't been a dominant team this year. Casey's yeah. been better than them this year. But I think Jet Duffy and that offense will provide some problems. It is a different team, Logan. But like coming off two losses for K State, what have you seen the past two weeks that you think they need to correct and ensure up? Coming into this weekend, I know you've seen it on the site where we just keep hitting on it, but the offensive line is just played poor. Beat the, beat the horse. <laughs> you shouldn't say about letters on the helmet. So, yeah, offensive line's better. Go with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've seen it when the offensive lineman is not, they're not in their blocking schemes. Uh-huh. Uh, there's just nowhere to run for the running backs, and Skyler's under pressure pretty much all day. He's so that's. Uh, Short answer. <laughs> Talk about these running backs, right. uh, Dale. Like, I mean, you, you got a couple of guys that are banged up, and James Gilbert's not practicing at the moment. Yeah. Jordan Brown barely practicing. We'll talk about. Let's them. just let's go down the list, yeah. right? And I think that's really well said too. You know about the offensive line, and then and then blocking for Skyler, and that. And I I want to answer your question because I'm glad that go, I'm glad you brought that up though, though because that's just we were talking yeah. before we got on here about football and. You know, Rivers throwing a thousand mm-hmm. picks and that kind of stuff. And he threw some really bad balls. But sometimes you watch those games, like watch that last throw that Skyler throws the pick. It's a bad throw. Yep. Like, I'm not defending. It's a bad throw. He had more time than he thought, no doubt. Philip <laughs> makes that throw. Right. No, no <laughs> doubt. Uh, he probably makes that. He might make that throw. I don't know. Um, I'm off track. But anyway, no, I mean, but yeah, you look at that's a three. It's a three yeah. man rush. And they don't get a lot of pressure, you know, but they get more than they should. And in a game where they're getting a lot of pressure throughout the game, it is Skyler today. I'm all over the place. Uh, go watch the last four minutes of my video with him, you know, on, on the K-State YouTube, K-State Online YouTube site, or it's on our on K-State Online too, but yeah. he just talks about, you know, the things you have to see as a quarterback and how you can throw picks when you th- see things you don't see. And how you, he, I think he even uses the term seeing ghosts, how, that, <laughs> how he admits that happens to him sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's really neat to hear because I think the offensive line leads into that. But the running backs, I just liked what Logan brought up there. Uh, I mean, James Gilbert, this is Tuesday, right? So James yep. Gilbert did not practice on Monday. Jordan Brown did a little bit. Joe Irvin, we found out, was suspended last week. Chris Kleiman was was forthright about that. Yep. Um, that's why he didn't play because we thought he was cleared, and he was, but he didn't dress and play was suspended. Sounds like that's all well and good. I, there's been a few of these this year, a few freshman suspensions, su- su- suspensions <laughs> some that have been reported, you know, um, some that have not that we haven't reported yet. There's been four or five of them. Um, I've seen on the board, is it a thing to worry about? I would sincerely tell you no, uh, because all these kids have come back after their suspensions. Yep. And I think it's K-State telling some of these some of these true freshmen, like, hey, you know, you're going to have to earn this and work for this, and if this is too hard for you, we're going to sit you down for mm-hmm. a week, you know, if you can't listen to these rules. And I think it's worked well for him. But anyway, so but I think he's going to be available, right? That's a big deal. Harry Trotter's going to be available. Uh, Tyler Burns we didn't really see, you know, last yep. week. Jacartier Wright. I don't think we're going to see. But so I I think the good news is I think you're going to see Joe Irvin, which gives you an athletic player you didn't have before. And I got to think, you know, if Jordan Brown's practicing on Monday, maybe Mm -hmm. he can be really healthy. I bet it's a better situation than it's been the last two weeks, but I still don't know how much better. So Kleiman did bring up real quick, just to throw Mm -hmm. right back at you, about Joe Irvin and and the – he's only – he still could redshirt technically. Correct. But do you think because the injuries to Gilbert and Brown – they do play. I mean, them. not to give you the most boring answer possible yeah. because it's a good question, but yeah. I yeah. mean, it's going to depend on those guys. And that's what Chris Kleiman said today, almost word for word. Mm-hmm. Think it's basically going to depend on James and Jordan. And that's the right thing. If James Gilbert and Jordan Brown are healthy and can play at, you know, 85% the last two games, then you have Harry Trotter and then Tyler Burns' emergency situation. Yeah. Then, yeah, I don't burn the red on Joe Irvin. But if they're not going to be that way, I absolutely will because, one, 
you got four freshman running backs you can break the class of anyway too you could redshirt next year if, mm-hmm. you know god forbid something happens and you get hurt and you want to do that and three you know like he says all the time this is the last year for these seniors this is you know an important year no matter what so you got to do everything you can to win these games and if that means burning joe Irvin's red shirt for six carries the last two weeks okay i'm not really against mm-hmm. that as long as it's what you're talking about it's because the two guys ahead just mm-hmm. simply aren't available and then we can get Logan in here in a second, but I want to go back to you again because I want to hear yeah, about Texas. Mo in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear talk about te- you talked about Texas Tech's offense being a little different with Jet Duffy and such, but what is their defense? Well, I'm still, I'm still and again, this yeah. is from climbing. This isn't my stuff. Yeah. I've talked to some Red Raider fell even today on the telephone, you know, before we came on here. And, and it is the team that will play some three man front, like K like State's had trouble with. It's a team that will play relatively aggressive. Yep. And I think it's a defense that has been, for the most part, you're going to find exceptions in games for sure, but you go down their scores, for the most part, more competitive and more aggressive and more physical Mm -hmm. than you're used to a Texas Tech defense being. It's not a great defense by any stretch. It hasn't been for a long time, and it didn't just become one in this year, and it's still susceptible to big plays and stuff in the passing game. It's not a great defense, but um, they can attack the running game. They will play an odd front. That's that's hurt K-State a little bit this year, and I don't think it's a game where you should expect this to be one where K-State can just show up and score 40 because Tech's terrible on mm-hmm. defense. Yeah. It's not it's not that kind of thing, I don't think. They got the leading tackler in the Big yep. 12, yep. Jordan Brown. They give up about 6.5 uh, yards per uh, play. Analysis. Which is which is enough. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, see, that's we don't need – yeah, Jimmy, we love you. But if Logan's <laughs> going to be here giving us, you know, at least like one or two stats, yeah, yeah we miss I'm, Jimmy. That's too. all I'm good we for. We miss Jimmy too. Oh, let's see what else is there to talk about about this game coming up. So, I mean, Dalton Schoen, how about? I mean, he's yeah, been man. a great player for this he really, team. I think he really has. Like, I'm glad you bring that up. Yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, he's got to be brought up like every listen, week. He's still, yeah, the hands are still a little average here and there. He had the double catch that yeah. 70 yard <laughs> touchdown. I know he didn't finish the catch against Texas. That was a really tough play. I bring up the critical stuff first because I'm going to gush about him for yep. the last whatever part of this. Like I think he's exceeded my expectations of what I knew he could be, mm-hmm. of what people thought he could be. He's a better athlete than he gets credit for. He has been a really, really good player for K-State yeah. this year. And in a year where the top three receivers going in probably should have been you know, Hunter Rice and Isaiah Zuber and Dalton Schoen, and only one of those kids could stick around, um, I really respect Dalton Schoen. I think he's played really, really well. And uh, he'll be missed. I mean, like yeah. he's got you know three games left, you know two in a bowl game. It's like it's over. But he's a good player, mm-hmm. and he's been good for Tyler Thompson. And I think he'll really be missed. Yeah, I really can't think of a drop this year other than the Texas right. game, which yeah. I don't really call Tough that a drop. Catch, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. I can't really count that as a drop. So he's done a phenomenal job. Over exceeded my expectations. Phenomenal. Yep. Phenomenal. So you, you've talked about uh, the offensive line struggles for K State, Logan. But like, tell me, so what, what's what's K State going to do? Is it they gonna, is Skyler going to sling the ball against this Texas Tech offense and find Shown deep again, or is it, they going to have to run the ball? What are they going to have to do to beat them? I mean, they've thrown the ball seventy times the last past two weeks. I, yeah. I don't think you can keep that up. I don't think that's the type of uh, K State team. I think you're going to have to run the ball. You're going to have to figure it out somehow. You can see when the offensive line figures it out. You got games like mm-hmm. Oklahoma and uh, Mississippi Kansas. State, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Kansas. Mississippi State. When they figure it out, it can be really potent, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, no, they're just going to figure it out. Well, I think he's right, but I think it's the thing. They, it's, it's they got to keep running the ball, just like Logan says. Yeah. Um, that's really who they're going to be. I think if you go back and read like you know the analysis, which is from Fan and Nelson mm-hmm. and that kind of deal, I think what became clear is – is they've got to run the ball in a little bit less obvious situations and maybe throw it a little bit less obvious situations. You know, and cliche being first down. You know, you throw a play action to Dalton showing a first down 70-yard touchdown. You don't expect that to be all the time. But then the rest of the game, until the last drive, when Case said I think, threw it on seven straight first downs. None yeah. of this is my info. I'm stealing it all again from Fan and from <laughs> Nelson. But then, from you know, from the, between those two plays, the split was something like, you know, 14 to, 14 to 4, uh-huh. you know, on, on first down runs against passes. K-State ran it okay at Chris Clemens today on, like, third down. Like, they ran it pretty well on yeah. non-traditional running downs. So I think that's, that's what they have to learn going forward this week is the run-pass split doesn't need to be, like Logan said, they've thrown it 70 times the last week, so they don't have to throw it any more than they have. But I think they have to throw it sometimes when it's not expected and do a better job of running it, not into these nine-man boxes mm-hmm. on first and two. Yeah, and what I kind of saw from West Virginia, they didn't throw that many screen passes to no. wide receivers, and sometimes they use that as a running play. When there's a lot of people in the mm-hmm. box, they throw it out to Young Blood. He maybe gets four or five yards, and that's almost like a first down like three run. Three straight plays yeah. against Texas, mm-hmm. they did it. Yeah, yeah. but they, we didn't see that against West Virginia. Not at all. Yeah. How explosive has Young Blood been? The little bit, the few times he's touched the ball. Very much so, to the point where you, 
uh, I don't love, you know me, I don't love being critical because yeah. I'm, not, I'm not in practices. I don't have a percent of the information that these guys do make game plans. But, I, yeah, he looks so explosive with the ball's yeah. hands. Um, you talk about the bubble screens, you know, that Logan's talking about, whether it's jet sweeps, whether it's just running a hitch and getting the ball, running a little dig. In, I mean, I, I do think he probably needs to have the ball on offense three or four times a game yep. because we see the explosiveness in the, ret- in the return game. And, and there's only so many balls to go around. I understand that. Everybody needs to get possessions and, and have things being used. But at a time when the running game is so non-existent, I think finding a way like he, like Logan just said, almost extending running plays that are involving Joshua Youngblood would be pretty wise. No doubt. Um, I guess should we just talk yeah. about? Yeah, let's. I let's mean, pick the game. And let's stuff, pick the right? game yeah. and stuff. And we could also look around the Big Twelve. I have it let's pulled look up. Around the Big Twelve. Let's go around the Big Twelve and then the finish up with K State. Yeah. And uh, Oklahoma State, number twenty-two, headed to Morgantown. Obviously, just beat K State a week ago, four and six, seven and three, going against four and six. ESPN two, eleven o'clock kickoff. Who do we take here? I mean, for me, definitely Oklahoma State. I know West Virginia did last week, and they should feel good about it. And it's in Morgantown, but I mean, we're, I don't think I don't think Chuba Hubbard, Chuba Hubbard, pardon me, and uh-huh. Oklahoma State will have as much trouble running the ball against West Virginia. And I think if you could run the ball against them, you could have huge plays in the passing game, even without Tylen Wallace. So I'm yeah. gonna be shocked if it's close. I think it'll be probably really close, but I'll take Oklahoma State and Morgantown. As well as K State defense uh, played, they still gave up plays that pretty much West Virginia got easy touchdowns. You yeah. talk about the missed field goal and then what was it lining up in front of the center exactly Ugh, and yep. then they got seven points after that k-state had a mishap where they couldn't find the receiver easy yep. touchdown that was 14 points that k-state just gave away i don't see oklahoma state doing that Same. to west virginia you brought it up i, I bet i picked trey to to have like a big game you know going into that and, and he did have a good he, game. yeah you know he's a good player yeah. but man you that was him out that was just going out of your way to call I, him you out know i love i love trey to but that was a big yeah it was a big what'd you say to his mishap. face <laughs> oh, man. I'm, I know you're going to maul me. Yeah, he would. choke me out. You absolutely no. <laughs> would. Yeah. Break your back. Oh. Um, Kansas headed to Iowa State. I mean, 24 and a half is the line going to Iowa State in this maybe, month. Maybe Manny Miles gets some more reps to build for the future. <laughs> Iowa State's going to beat the dog tar out of him. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, It's probably going to be really cold, and Kansas is probably not going to want to play anyway. God, I hope it's <laughs> so. cold up there. And nice and toasty and yeah. loving. Mm. Um, but, but yeah, K, uh, KU loses big. Uh, here's a here's a big matchup. Number nineteen Texas six and four headed to nine and one Baylor. Texas is still number nineteen. I know that is kind of an, at six and four. How is that possible? I don't know. How is that? Is possible? that right? You got yeah. That's it says amazing. nineteen. Um, that is. Well, nice. I tell you what. I watched. I, just lost I watched the State. entire second half of that Baylor OU game. And I just don't respect Baylor. After I, mean, I can't. I can't. I can't watch you be up 31 to 10 in the biggest game in your program's history, or one of the top three or four, to get and then to get beat as bad as they got beat in the second half. I mean, outgained 368 to 69, 22 to four in first down. It's like 58 to 16 in plays. Like they got destroyed. Uh, I don't think they get back up for it. I think they lose to Texas. Wow. Yeah, that's I think, a big. That's a big. Yeah, and I know. I know. But I, I just think that's just. I, they, they died to me in that game. Yeah. I was done with him in that game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think Baylor's got away with a couple of games. Talk about the yeah. TCU game. Yep. I think they only beat West Virginia by three points at home. Yeah. yeah. And I think they just come back to earth for the Texas game and probably lose. So I got Texas. Look at that. Two two guys on the horn. <laughs> we're both that? like just going off at where they're ranked. Maybe we're going to pick them. You know, I mean, like we both like them to win. It doesn't make any sense how they're ranked 19, yeah. though, because they were ranked 19 last week. Lose yeah, to Iowa lost State. Lost Iowa State. By yeah. a few points, but still, yeah. How do you yeah. not drop in the rankings at all? Good old Texas getting that Texas treatment. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pick the Bears here in this one. I think they turn around. I think they, they yeah, they, they really – Lost it big time against Oklahoma. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Do they want a rematch for the Sooners? I know they're saying they are, Ooh. but I mean, oh. I don't. I don't know. Actually, yeah, because yeah. I bet you that I, I would pick Oklahoma by 45 in that game. Yeah, yeah thank you so much. 28, but, 28 to three leads are just yeah. dangerous. <laughs> yeah, they are. I bet the ESPN percent chance of victory is like 99. You know, <laughs> that kind of stuff. But I think if they somehow were to get a, a, in that kind of a lead against Texas, I bet you they actually keep it. Probably instead so. of an I Oklahoma team that yeah, as explosive as they are. And then you finish up with number 10 Oklahoma nine and one. Just yeah, coming off that big win, uh, they're playing at home against TCU five and five. Pretty I mean, easy I mean, here. TCU been better late, of course, but I mean, you think, I think the Sooners probably win. Sooners probably win. Yeah, I'll go Sooners. Yeah, we'll go, I'll go Sooners. So now let's pick the K-State game. Back, and is this right? 
I mean, I don't know what you're looking at. I have doubts about all your stuff. I have, because I have doubts that this is that because it says number 24 Kansas State. Yeah, that's not this week's rankings. Why are they? Sh- well, ESPN screwed up. Rankings haven't come out yet, and so they probably have that's what it is. Here, that's what so it that's is. That's why you're doing it. Anyway. And I just think your phone is slow. I, I'm I'm phony. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody, Texas is not still ranked. <laughs> yep, mean, they were they not. at the time of this recording in the playoffs. Still exactly, number 19, but because it hasn't been updated and. Yet. So yeah, Oklahoma will get a bump. Baylor will drop a little bit. I guess you that know. Texas treatment. We should take that line back. <laughs> we should take that line back. I'm sorry. We're, you're, right. you're over there. I am he's in the world. I am. You know. <laughs> I didn't say horns down or anything like that. No, you didn't. So you didn't. Uh, horns anyway. down. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. So let's pick it. K State headed to Texas Tech. For this lovely game, I already know. I know you. Who you I'll just get it out, so man. Just, yeah, I'll get it out of the way. You guys are gonna love this. I'm picking Texas Tech to win. Like I'm not gonna go down the line and tell you my record of picking K State games. It's not very hard to figure out. It's terrible. It's absolutely. <laughs> I terrible. think all of ours are this. Show. So no, listen, right? don't get mad that I'm picking Texas Tech. Um, I like the Red Raiders, 28-24. I think it's gonna be another mid 20s Big 12 K State kind of game. They've had the last couple of weeks. Um, that I think goes unfortunately the other, t- other teams' way. I like the way Jit Duffy's playing. I think Tech's more explosive on offense, going to have more plays that are kind of cheap to steal plays. Like you talked about West Virginia, a couple of cheap tough down, touchdowns last week. Hopefully they're not that cheap. But I'll take the Red Raiders. But like I said, I'm wrong all the time. Wait, K-State. <laughs> so, I mean, exactly. <laughs> and I can't stand K-State. So, I mean, that's all is what it is. Uh, I do have to bring up, though, 20-4 and four against the spread the last week's on Powercat game day. 20-4 no, against that's the That's spread. impressive. Not one game was a K-State game to pick. Uh, so Matt in Vegas. Them, right? Dale in Vegas. And I haven't bet one cent on them. So uh, <laughs> that's why you, that's why you put stock in my picks. You need yeah. to move to Vegas and make, turn this into a yeah, career. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> because I bet on KC every week and I'd be like 2-8. and eight. And I'd be, Maybe, the, I'd be, maybe yeah. the Chargers move yeah. to oh, Vegas too. Yeah. With the, maybe, that'd, <laughs> that'd be great. great. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> Who you got here, uh, Logan? I've been battling with myself all it's day. It's a tough one, isn't it? It's a tough, tough one. I mean, Tech's like a one-point favorite in this game, I think. Two and a half, I think. Two and a half? That's what I saw. Yep. Yep, I keep half. saying after K State loses, oh they'll bounce back, oh they'll bounce back, and it's just like, it's just getting old. So like, I'm going Texas Tech 30, K State 27. Usually when I pick K State to lose, they'll usually win. Knock on wood. So again, like Matt said, don't get mad at me. You don't know, get mad. I'm the only one that actually gave any yeah. the Mountaineers any kind of credit last week with my score prediction, only losing ah, by like seven points. Yeah, you had I had 30 to 20, you had 27 to 20. I don't, know that they, I don't know that they were significantly different picks, but I mean, but I think even last week, I think I even praised you and said, hey, that's not so different than mine. They're trying to make you feel better. And then this and week, you're, you're, and this week you're like, oh, I was the only person who said this game would be remotely close. It's fine, dude. I'll do that next time when I try to make you feel better about, about your picks. So. Well, I mean, I'm going to go against you guys in this one, so you can trash me all you want. I'll go K State going down to Lubbock, getting this win, and I, I mean probably similar score to to what I picked last week against West Virginia, but this time in Lubbock, let's go 28-20 now. Mm. K State getting this win. I just think I, I I don't believe in Jet Duffy. I think he's a, an all right quarterback. I know K State hasn't seen a bunch of what he's going to be able to do. They took care of him last year, you know? and yeah, I just yeah. I think K State handles him. They corral him. I think it's going to be a close game. It's going to be a tough game in Lubbock, but K State gets the win. That's, what a show. I know. What, yeah. <laughs> what are we at? Send it. <laughs> you know, almost a half hour long, good preview podcast for K-State versus Texas Tech. Got a little basketball in. And we're going to head to Arkansas Pine Bluff and see, see some gonna, basketball We're going to go to Lubbock this weekend, too. That's exciting. I mean, we have a chance. Logan's gonna, coming with us. Logan's coming. Awesome. We have a chance in the car to really look at that that tournament. You yep. know, they're going to be playing uh-huh. against Pitt, and we can preview that a little yep. bit. We can have a good time. We'll have to do another show from down there. We'll be out at four golf thing, I think, for Power Cat Game yep. Day. So if you're going to be in Lubbock, just look up four. It's like a clever name, yeah. you know, like F-O-R-E or something like that. And I don't it's know. a night game, too. It's so a you night can, game, so you got to have time to go out Friday yep. if you want yeah. to. Yeah. Which we could, we could possibly be out there. <laughs> we could be out it's about. possible. We'll we'll put us on the Twitter and stuff. Yeah. That might happens. hit the dance floor. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I was a thinking we'd have, we'd have a fun, like, a fun like, different of ages. Like, I'm old, and then D-Y's a little less old, uh-huh. and you're a little less old, and then he's Logan's a little less old. We uh-huh. could have a fun group out there. It's going to be a fun group. I think Logan's gonna add a little spice to the yeah. little spice to the mix, <laughs> a, little, a little paprika. <laughs> right. Um, so, yep, that's the KSO show from Tallgrass Tap House Legacy Insurance and People Say Bank. Thank you for supporting. Oh, us remember and... I said I was gonna make you say things about all the sponsors last time. I'm not gonna do it <laughs> next, next yeah. week. Next we also, week. we're gonna write down I think all 
10 of who we think and what minutes we get laid out. You're right. We didn't either, of, the games <laughs> we didn't that we're either do. of those things. So when we're in the car we're in for the car. 10 hours on Friday, we have a lot of time to do, do your homework. Stuff. Yeah, do That's your right. homework. Yeah. Or yeah, so we just work out work on work out in the car. Yeah, exactly. It's all in the car. It's road work. Tell your friends. Friends.